Hello, everybody. My name is Sylvain Rochon, the Paradise Engineer. Um, today, I want to talk about human purpose. What is human purpose? That's a big question, and uh, it's something that has been floating around in my mind since I'm a little boy. I've always come, came back to it because it's an interesting thought process. Um, I'm very comfortable with my answers. I'm not sure if you're going to be comfortable with them, but I want to lay them out in detail because a lot of people get stuck with it. A lot of people get annoyed and frustrated by... Um, by the, the, the non-answer <laughs> that we often get from the world about this question. Now, of course, there is the obvious guidance uh, to that question where you have philosophies and religions and groups that define the answer of that question for you. Most religions are structured that way. You know, the Catholic Church, their human purpose is to uh, to, to reach heaven, I suppose. Um, and other philosophies have these, these dogma that define why we're on this earth. Why are we here? Who do we serve? Who we do, do we not serve? And so on and so forth. So we can be told through these stories and, and groupings about what is your purpose. So it's, it's not a rational type of thinking. It's more based on belief and systems. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there is the entirely scientific point of view. If you look at um, the idea of evolution, you know, the theory of evolution, where human beings have appeared through a succession of random mutations from the goo of the primordial oceans. Um, so first, the abiogenesis to create the first functional cells, and then so on through adaptation, uh, to the, um, the, uh, the, the top of the food chain, if you will, being human. And in that sense, if you look at it this way, if you look at wh how you came to be on the earth and how we came to be on the earth as you know, being evolution like this, then there is no directed purpose at all. It's just because we are essentially just an, uh, a random free accident of nature and random mutation. And so there's no higher purpose to our existence in that way uh, unless we invent one for ourselves because there's no inherent goal. Now, I, I'd like to offer a third, like kind of a middle option because this is something I've posted on this before. Um, the theory of evolution aspect of things always assumes that there is no interference from a non-natural source. Uh, like it's all about asteroids, you know, the earth forming, random mutations because of uh, environmental causes and, and so on and so and, you know, pressures inside the ecosystems as they develop and so on and so forth. Um, but we have to assume since we are basically in agreement uh, that there are, there is intelligent life somewhere in the universe. They must be because of the vastness of space and probabilities and so on. Um, then like, why don't we take into account that maybe there was some interference from maybe a long time ago, maybe more recently, whatever, intelligent creatures uh, from elsewhere that have scientific knowledge. If they travel here, they certainly have at least the same level of science as we do. And we're able to gene edit our genomes. We're able to modify and create life and so on. So what if both parts of the spectrum actually marry in one, in one same story. Because there are problems, serious problems with evolution and on its own, like the abiogenesis, where you have from, uh, from chemicals to the first cell, we have no idea how that's possible. There's a bunch of theories, but we've never able to, to reproduce it in lab. We can't do it. Uh, but what if there was some help in doing that? What if in certain steps of humanity, there was help from elsewhere? and the stories of gods and people with personalities that had superpowers are actually depictions of those, uh, those extraterrestrial contacts that, had, that was interfering in humanity. These are all stories and speculation. But, I mean, something we have to consider, I think, in this day and age. And that means that, in that if that case actually happens to be true, because then again, we can't prove that at all, uh, then maybe there is something to human purpose 
because there is a not an actual vaporous God that is omniscient, but there is a God figure or, or people that intervened or interfered for a certain reason, their own reason, which we can just guess. But it does mean that there was a purpose in their interference, and we have yet to discover what that is. No matter what the case is, no, for, if, if the source of the human purpose is, is religion or some kind of story from, uh, from tradition, well, there's no proof that this is actually what we're supposed to do. It's not, no scientific proof. It is an idea of, of a belief. If it's evolution, there is no such thing. If there, it's kind of a mix with uh, you know, dealing with the universe and possible extraterrestrial life, uh, well, there is a purpose, but there's no way to know what the purpose is unless you, again, go back to the belief system. So what are we to do? Well, I said it already before here. Maybe you didn't notice. It is a question of choice. Because if we don't know, if we can't really prove rationally which path comes our human purpose from, wh wh where does it come from, then we, we, we better off just remaining in doubt. We don't know. And not knowing is actually not okay. Eventually, we'll figure things out. We always kind of do. Or at least we get closer to a solution over time. And we'll get there when we get there. But for the time being, this overarching great scheme of human purpose is unknowable. And we just don't know about it. Therefore, we might as well direct ourselves. So make a choice. What do we want to do with this planet? And and then I circle back, like, with all this kind of discussion, kind of put aside now, um, what should we do with our world? I, I, I think the easiest path is usually the best, because it's the path of least resistance is where most people will naturally gravitate towards, because they are, their motivations, their emotions, their biology kind of directs them in a, in a certain direction. And since we're all programmed, the same way with our DNA, and we're all function basically the same way with the same emotions, the same type of motivations, the same type of reactions when we touch something, when we see certain things inside our body, we, and we know this from research, uh, then we can actually create a purpose that is in line with the, our most comfortable state and the lowest effort. And if we do this, then naturally we'll kind of stay there because it is comfortable, it is easy, it comes naturally. And then that purpose is basically aligned with who we are in our biology. So what I propose, is we, and I've talked about this again in multiple writings, we have essentially two uh, opposite neural states like that, that is intrinsic to our, our biology, our uh, neurotransmitters, uh, our whole systems. We have the sympathetic neural system and we have the parasympathetic neural system. The first one, the, the, the sympathetic neural system, is the fight or flight system. So it's, it's activated in cases of stress or chronic stress over time, but basically stress. It's, uh, it allows you to run fast, have those negative emotions like fear, anger, to survive, basically. It is uncomfortable. It's biologically toxic. It makes us uh, survivalist, ergo antisocial to a certain degree. Not very nice. And a lot of problems on the planet occur because of people that are in this state of stress. Uh, conflicts, uh, uh, criminal acts, violence. Usually it's when people are suffering either from chronic stress so their, their sympathetic neural system is constantly activated, so they're constantly in this state of negative emotion and, uncomfortable and discomfort, and they want to get out of it, and they are selfish. And then there's the complete opposite. When there's no chronic stress and there's no or very little, um, very little like, instances of, of, um, of momentary uh, stress, then we are in a natural parasympathetic sympathetic neural, neural system is activated. And that's the good stuff. That's healthy, helps for digestion. Uh, mostly it's, a, it's fun, like dopamine, oxytocin, fun drugs that are coming on, uh, coming on that makes us feel relaxed, happy, social. That's the oxytocin uh, and the, dop the dopamine to a certain degree. 
uh, that are activated. We want to help people. We don't want to, we, we don't feel frustrated. We don't feel the negative emotions. We feel the joy. So we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to steal. We, we just want to chill and relax and enjoy life because there's no stress. There's no need for survival instincts. And that's, an, again, that's another system that everybody has. And when a people is at peace and there is enough food, there's enough lodging, there's enough basic needs for everybody, then most people are in that particular state and everything runs fine and people help each other and they support each other. And there's an organic kind of um, collaboration that happens in neighborhoods when somebody needs help, we help and so on and so forth. So my suggestion of around human purpose, since, since we better off making a choice, I suggest that we choose to, to create, uh, that, that our purpose is to create a world where everybody is almost constantly in their parasympathetic neural system activation mode. Everybody's chill and relaxed and happy and joyful and collaborative and social. And that could be a purpose, a purpose of creating this world. Now, I've wrote a book about this, Engineering Paradise. I keep talking about it because I think this is actually doable. This is something, this is a world we can create for ourselves. And the bottom line of it, and everything that I write, is that you have, in fact, to remove the stresses, the, especially the constant stresses. Like, we have to make sure people don't need to work for a living anymore. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be a requirement for survival to work. We have automation, we have AI, we have ways to liberate ourselves from human labor, at least force human labor where if you don't do it, then there's social problems and consequences and so on. So we alleviate these stresses. And by alleviating, the, alleviating these, these stresses, then everybody has got their basic needs met because of automation, all this stuff to eliminate the stresses again. Everybody is in parasympathetic neural system mode. Everybody's chill and we help each other and now we're social beings constantly. We don't fight each other as much and so on. And we have a really nice world to live in. So that can be a purpose for humanity to build this. And it doesn't require much because these systems, these, these both dual systems that we have, the survival system and the chill and relaxing system, are integral to every human being possible on earth. So if we remove the stresses, because we can, using technology, then people will go to the state that is beneficial for everybody, that is cheap, that is healthy, that is collaborative, and automatically everybody's kind of concerned about each other instead of only themselves, but there's no survival mode again. And we can collaborate to build a better world from that state and improve upon it from that state as well. So that's my suggestion. So I recommend to everybody, well, let's choose our human purpose to be the creation of this world. Let's choose to engineer a paradise together. I'm going to put down below <coughs> something new. I've created a Patreon page because I want to engage people that really want to get engaged with me in creating this paradise. And, uh, and you can join the Patreon, kind of contribute. I'm contributing my time, the website, all this stuff. You can contribute a little bit of money. And it creates a, a work group using Discord. Uh, and obviously other means we'll use to actually create some projects and do something about all this. So I'm encouraging you to do that if you wish. And otherwise, if you're not interested, no problem. You can like, share this video and distribute it because you know, the more people kind of think along simple lines like this, the better. Because all we really want is to be happy, isn't it? Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Have a good one.